now it's tick for this class. I'm using the cable of a broom. If you're gonna do the same, make sure that you take the broom side out, so it's not too heavy for one side. If you do not have, but you have another stick at home that I cannot think right now, but if you have something else, you can do too. Of course, a scenario, uh, a band, it's gonna work similar, not exactly the same. Um, or towel, blanket, whatever, something that you can use pretty much to pull apart. But that's our idea for today. Um, I think I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to do that. Before we start actually using, uh, let's go to all fours just to warm up the spine a little bit and start giving some core activation. So find this all fours alignment, hands, shoulders, knees and hips, press the feet down. Let's just go to our regular catch and cow to start. Tucking the pelvis, engaging the abdominals, pressing the top of the feet to the floor, pushing the earth away, ears between the biceps. Inhale, extension. Remember, it's very used to this by this point. Exhale, top. Inhale, arch. Shoulders back, still lifting off the floor. Three more. Two. Stop in neutral and start to activate the core. Tuck your toes under, engage the abdominal before the movement, and the goal is to engage, engage uh, pull the belly in without tuck the pelvis. So check if you are tucking. If you are, try avoid. Press into your toes, lift the knees just an inch. What might happen here? The heels tend to open, the knees sometimes are coming in. Take a look down. Feet, knees, hands should be everything in one straight line. Push up to down facing dog. Remember to prioritize your straight spine. Stretching the mat forward, chest to the left. Little by little, try to melt the heels down. Now bend one knee at a time, lifting the opposite heel. Try to keep the hips square. So legs are moving, abdominals are moving, hip as still as possible. Both heels down. Take the right leg up to the ceiling. Exhale, lower the hip, bring the knee to the chest. That is this position that is on top of the pelvis. Inhale, go back up. Now take the knee across to the opposite elbow. Look to the same side. Inhale up. Now take the knee to the same elbow but turn it out. And go back all the way up. Bring the foot down. Let's give a little pose, knees down. Create a child's pose. If you prefer to introduce the arms behind you, that works too. Let's get to the other side. So just pretty much waking up the muscles. Knees down, toes tuck it under. First, just lift both knees, connect to the core. Remember to have hands, knee, and feet in one line. Now go all the way up. Looking down, 
Let's take the left leg up to the ceiling. Bring the knee to the chest, planting the low plank. Inhale, up again. Exhale, across to the opposite elbow. Look to the same side. Inhaling up. Now bring to the left, knee open. All the way up. Bring the foot down. Stretch your double facing dog one more time. Bring the knees down. Relax back in the one more child's pose. I always like when I go to child's pose to bring my hands behind. Just give a stretch to the back of the shoulder, then work at the line, all those plank variations. Fine. Now let's get to a kneeling position. Uh, so no hands. We're gonna start using the stick. shoulder direction. Keep it a width apart of your legs and feet. Now avoid letting the booty be sitting back. So tuck in the pelvis just a little bit and the tuck is not going to actually go to a tuck. You're going to really find a neutral here. Squeezing the glutes, activating the hamstrings, the low area of the bag, so it's the lower portion of the rectus abdominals and the transverse abdominals. The transverse is the one that hug your waist around. So imagine that you're uh, making this waist tight. Just for the breath. Let's just start lifting the arms up. Squeeze the glutes, try to reach a little higher. Try not always to lift from the ribs, making the abdominals engaged but lengthening up. If you are using a band, just stretch the band out slightly. We are not trying to lower the arms. We are just trying to connect the shoulder blades on the back. With the stick, you are doing the same thing. We are pretending that you can pull apart. Pull apart and break apart. So imagine this is foldable and you can do break, okay? So pulling out, trying to break. So what happened to my shoulder when I do that? Plug down. That's what we are looking for, for this plug. Now watch your front ribs. If your front ribs are popping all the way forward, hug them together, like receiving a punch on the stomach. You should feel the whole body connecting right here. Shoulders, abdominals, glutes, and strength. Your body gonna work as much as you are willing to do, pulling the body to do. Now from here, keep the arms up by the ears. We're gonna roll down from the shoulders. Back. We are trying to avoid sit back as more as possible. So reaching forward with the hands. If you let your hips sit back, this exercise is gonna turn to a thing and don't supposed to be. You should be shaking, resisting to sit back. Now roll up. All the way up, push the hip extra forward, extend back. Inhale, return to center. Lower the arms down for a second. So all this activation that we on purpose do, that's pulling apart and trying to break apart, engage a lot of your know, rotator cuff and the outside of your shoulders. And of course, between the shoulder blades making the whole front, chest and shoulders open and wide. What is not common in our daily routine anymore because you're always bending forward. So you're trying to compensate all that. Let's do two more times of the same exercise. Arms go up, 
pull apart. If it is just bent, if it is the stick, try to break apart, plugging the shoulders down. Engage the core. Feel the hamstrings, that is the back of your thighs turning on. Glutes turning on. Just hold this activation for a little bit. Trying to get deeper activation. Pulling the ribs together, making the body one inch longer. Now let's try round forward. Maintain the arms between, I mean around your ears. Press the feet down. Engage the glutes and the abdominals. The hips gonna sit back a little bit. But we are trying to avoid. Now roll up, push the hips forward, extend the spine back, let the arms go back to abs in still. Return, lower the arms one more time, going back. Let's do again. Last one in this grounded forward and extension. A little fast. So activate your legs, abs, glutes, pull the stick apart, trying to break apart. Connect the front ribs, reach taller. Holding like tucking the pelvis. That's the activation that our body has right now. Roll up. Go to extension, abs in. Breathe abs deeper in. And return. Quick break again. Shoulders rolling back. Same thing in position. Now let's add a little rotation on the spine. Uh, hip width apart. I'm gonna do forward now to see the rotation better. Push the hip forward, still connect to the ribs. Same activation that we had before. Arms go forward, shoulders down. First, rotate. Still trying to pull the stick apart. Or if you're out of the band, stretch in the band slightly. Don't try to open the arms. Hold. Both arms should be fully straight. If we start to bend the elbow, we are not rotating from the waist anymore. So fully straight. Hold the rotation, pushing the hip forward. Arms go overhead. Still straight. Still engaging the abdominals. Look to your back arm. Lower the arms down. Inhale forward. Exhale to the other side. Reaching the right arm as more as you can. Inhale up. Lifting from the waist. Look to your back arm. Down. Forward. Don't go up from the side so you can see the core and the hip. Still push the hip forward. Twist to the right. Arms up. Looking back. Reach up. Abs in. Lower the arms down, twist forward. Last one to the left. Push the hip, engage the abdominals. Lower the arms down, come back forward. Woo! So a little break to the back muscles. Want to break too? One more thing here on our knees. Arms forward. Now it's really core more than everything. Mainly to protect the spine. Squeezing the glutes, pushing forward. The movement is going to happen from the knee. Uh, we're going to bring the hands together in center. So your feet, they are actually touching. Watch, don't break the wrist. No directions. So reaching forward. Punching forward, hinge back from your knees. Hold, shoulders back and down, arms up. Arms down, return. So when you return, you're returning from the chest. If you feel that you need to separate the hands to be able to raise the arms overhead, do that. Hinge back, feeling the knee tight, stretch, squeezing the glutes, abs in, shoulders down, looking slightly up, arms up. Abs in. Return. 
Ooh, one more time. Exhale back. Arms up. Return. Now we're gonna add a little uh, rotation with one arm. The pitch fall is gonna be. We're gonna hinge back, right? Same way. The pitch falls when we take one hand. Let the stick incline down. You don't want to let this happen. So we're going to hinge back, same way that we did before. We're going to take one arm to go up. This arm needs to be stable enough to keep the stick parallel to the floor. Right, so we are working for the stability of this opposite shoulder. Let's go again. So hinge back, maybe a little less than before, so you can be more aware. Oops, take the right arm up, rotate back. You can either get your ankle, and if you cannot, just support your blow back. Now take the stick up, look up there, stretch, return the stick, look forward, take your back arm back around to return, other side, hinge back, stabilize the stick, opposite arm up, around to the heel, keep forward, abs in. Take this stick up and back. Return. Return the arm. Returning your body to this neutral position. Push back to child's pose. With this stick closed, we're going to use again in the field. Let's come to a plank on the forearms, arms um, parallel here like a genie, okay? Don't let your uh, hands go away from the elbow. Try to keep feet to elbow direction on my hand, okay? Arms can, hands can be open or can be closed, it doesn't matter. Extend one leg at a time to a plank. And just saw your body back and forward without letting the hip tight. If you can have your side feet together, perfect. Abs in, glutes engaged. Stop neutral, turn to a side plank. You can either keep one foot on top of another or one foot in front of another. Free arm up. Lower the hip an inch or two and up. Three. Two, one, turn to a plank again, push the earth away with your shoulders, turn to the other side, down and up, three, two, one, come to a plank again. Open to the side. Now I would keep my top foot in front of the bottom foot. Three arms up. Usually we do the tread the needle, moving just the chest. Today we're gonna move the hip too. So we're gonna tread the needle, fight the hip up. Open to side plank, lower the hip down. Two more, two it. Five up, abs in. Return. Oh, one more time. Plank. Other side. Tread the needle back up. Down. Side plank. Two more. Exhaling up. Last one. Plank, last one. Hold it here. Ten seconds. Squeezing the glutes, engaging the thighs, elongating the neck. 
Squeeze chin to reach back. Pull in the belly. Knees down. We're gonna kick the booty up to the ceiling and just bring the chest to the floor. Go 
back to a line down position. Still with the stick, still pulling that stick forward. One vertebra at a time. Engaging the legs too. Down to the line down position finally. We're gonna keep using the sticks for now. On the arms, let's see. I have enough space here I get. Arms up. Um, so here, as more together your hands are, the more uncomfortable gonna be for the shoulders. So you, you're gonna choose how far you need to separate your hands. You're gonna feel that when you start the movement. Feet close to your hip, to your butt, but a little wider. Knees and toes turning out to the same direction. We're gonna bridge up, opening the hips. Arms go overhead. Oops. Keep the arms there. So as more close to the floor as you can without touching the floor. Roll your spine down. Keep the hands in place. Maybe feeling a little side body stretch. And again, hinge up. Roll the spine down. And here you can bring the arms back up. We don't have to. Exhale up. Arms back. Our main thing is to articulate the spine down with the arms back there. Elongating the side body more. Two more times. If you're not feeling enough of the side body stretch, bring your hands a little closer together. Now bring your feet close together, not just parallel, but really pressing one another. You're gonna take the right knee to the chest, pass the leg in front of the stick. Try to keep it here. If you have to keep the knee bent, you can. If you have to keep the stick behind the hamstring, that's okay too. I would prefer to keep the arms straight. So go as high as you can, even if you have to bend the knee a little bit. Now the stick is being pulled towards you, so to pull the leg, and the leg is reacting, pushing away. So it's like a fight between the stick and the leg. Press into your bottom foot, lift. So the stick stay, the leg is light up. Now down, get the stick higher, pull the leg to you. Two more. Up. Down, keep the leg and the stick touching, pull the leg. So to keep the arms straight, you want to slide up, lower down, relax the shoulders, one more. Down, pull the leg. Now, same leg, we're going to try to do the opposite. So the stick is in the front. And that's going to be way harder to keep this touching each other. So press the leg into the stick. Lift. Press. Down. Press the leg. Two more. So start your legs together and always be aware of your base leg. The base leg when we lift, that leg tends to open just because most of the time our outer leg and outer glutes is stronger than the inner thigh. So you need to fight against this unbalance and keep pulling the knee in. If we don't fight against our natural unbalances, they're going to naturally increase themselves. So we need to be aware to be fighting against. Our body has so many 
compound squats just with the lateral rotation. Now activities. Good. So we are trying to start with the leg in front of the stick, or if you have, if you are using a band, you can either put it behind your leg or on the foot too. Okay. Press the leg. You should feel stretching more behind your hamstring and calf just by pressing the leg to the stick and resisting to that. Press into your bottom foot, lift. Lower down. Go high with the stick, pulling the leg to the chest. Two more. We passed the time already. We're doing a little longer today. You still have one or two more exercises after that. Up. I'm telling you that, so if you cannot hold and stay a little more. Finish this one, hug your knees, do a little rock side to side, and you're free to go. You can stay, even better. Up. Down. Oh, now let's switch, this is just gonna be in the front. So this one is way harder because if the hamstring is stiff and the calf is stiff, uh, as even knowing that you're gonna be trying, 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 trying to lift, the back of the leg is gonna be pulling away. So it's way harder. So you need to work your quads a lot to be able to pull the leg. And of course, bend the knee a little bit if that's the only way to have your leg near stick touch. If you are for the bend right now, bend on the hands. Try to find contact with the band and the leg and just try to maintain that thing touching each other. Three times, up. Press the leg to the stick or band. Down. Two more. Up. Down. Press the leg to the stick. Let the stick get higher on the ankle. Last one. This leg all the way down, shake it out. Oh, I need to drink water again. We should be really feeling that it's necessary to drink water because the breath, the exhalation is through the mouth. And this drive, and me, I'm talking and breathing. I just saw this video on YouTube of this guy, he's a therapist, specialist in decompressing and balancing the hip and the pelvis, and I just love it, the exercise. This one you might just actually feel if you have a stick, the band is not going to work in the same way, but I'm going to give you a variation, a different way to do the exercise that you can try to feel the same thing. The stick, just because something firm and don't depend on you to be straight, is way more effective, okay? So that's your size. So what I'm trying to say about the pelvis is this. Um, most of us, we have a little unbalance and one side of the hip tends to pike. And this can be because we always lean to the same side. This can be because one leg, most of the time, is a little longer than the other. And that's a bone formation, so it's not something that is depending on us or whatever, it can be so much different things, I'm balancing on the muscle, one side is way stronger, so it's going to be pulling the back to the side, a lot of things can create this pelvis inclining. So the way that you love this exercise. Okay, so that it is. We're going to pass the right leg again in the front and bend, right tabletop. So the tabletop of the stick passing behind. The other leg is going to come from the front, right? If I lose my hand here, they stick fall. So I have to keep it holding. Pretty much they're going to fight against each other. So the right leg is pushing forward. The left thigh is pressing in. Don't do too strong. Try to be aware. Both hip bones on the back should be touching the floor, shoulders down. Feel your abdominals also turning on. Press your low back to the floor. 
Now release a little bit. We're going to do four more times. It's about activation, it's not about movement. So if you feel that, oh, my, my right leg is winning, that's not a good thing. It's just trying to be at even pressure with both sides. Let's do, go for a second round. You can lift a little bit in your head for a few seconds to find more of your core activation and watch if your hip bones are in line. Relax. So five times 10 seconds activation. If you feel any click, um, cracking on the hip, low back, pelvis with no pain, don't be worried. That's totally true. Okay, let's go again. So that's our turn. You can choose lift your head or not. Press the right thigh out, left thigh in. Feel the abdominals turning on. Make sure that your arms are also even uh, open, both sides, abs in. Maybe a little more activation than the other two times. Down. Last two. Okay, yeah. If one day you're doing by yourself, count 10 seconds on your head. Uh -huh. We have one more. If you feel tension on the neck, just lift, take a look, and bring your head back down. Ask yourself, am I pressing my right? Am I pulling my left? Am I pressing my abdominal sink? Relax. Take the leg out, just shake it out. Let's do the other side. So five rounds of 10 seconds again. That's a great way to also work the deep abdominal muscles, the stabilizers. So now the stick is behind the left thigh, in front of the right one. Try to have this stick more to one side than the other, should be center. Legs are hip width apart, so we have a fist uh, space between. Hands right side, shoulders down. Trying to keep that table top lift. I already felt my first click. You might feel like, oh, this side's way hard, or this leg can pull better than can push. All on balance. On balance. Break. Four more. Lift. Are you pressing your left forward? Are you pulling your right in? For example, my left side is great in the other way, pressing in, but it's having a very hard time to press out. And the right is doing the opposite, right? Let's do three more. Up. Check whatever is the hardest thing for you. Now is my left. I'm pushing my left forward a little extra. Resisting with the right. Abs in. Press the low back down. Relax. Last two. And let's do it one more time. Press the left out, pull the right in, heads in. Five. Engage your pelvic floor to stop with all of the bathroom muscles. Ooh, relax. Lose your stick to the side. Last exercise here. Two feet together. Bring them between your knees. Feet together. Table top. Now just press your knees to your feet. Don't let the feet separate. Now the fist is going to fight, the knee is going to press in, the fist is, fist is trying to press up. Press the knees in, press the fist up, 
shoulders down the floor. Abs in. Knees in, feet out, trying to open. Again, press the knees in, feet out. Relax. Extend the legs on the floor. Turn to your stomach, let's give you an extension to the hip and back. Legs together. Hands, don't bring the hands too close to you because you want to feel comfortable in the position. And legs together reduce the space on the low back. Right? So keep the hands away for just lifting a little bit. Now try to bring your inner thigh touching, the side feet touching. Abdominals in. To feel extension on the back, but no pressure. Abdominals in. Hip bones trying to come up off the floor. All the way down. Up to all fours. Just like we started today. Cat. Extension. Extension. One more time. Neutral. Tuck the toes. Push back. Down facing dog. Bend the knees slightly. Elongating the low back. Now from here, bring your feet together. Cross your right leg in front of the left. Press those inner thighs together. Push up to downward dog again. Now try to get your arches to touch the floor. And cross, cross the other way. Left in the front. Squeezing the inner thigh and press the arts of the feet to the floor. Straight legs. Great. Knees down. Roll up through your spine. And we are all jumping to make final here. Thank you very much.